Okay, thanks, Joe. Thanks for the wonderful introduction. I'm happy to be back here, uh, Investor Inspiration, on this Friday. And you know, today I joke about uh, today being order flow Friday because it seems like all the presentations today are geared towards order flow, which is fantastic. You know, because I believe order flow really is the way to understand what's happening in the markets. And today I'm going to be talking about uncovering hidden movements in the market with order flow. And my goal for you today is to show you how to get an edge over other traders by seeing what they don't see. I'm going to explain what are hidden price movements and how to see them. And I'm going to talk about what no one will tell you about becoming a successful trader. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with me, or this is maybe the first time you're watching one of my presentations, I'll explain who I am. Again, my name is Michael Valtos, and I've been in the futures industry for over 25 years, basically. And I started on the CME floor as a runner with Dean Witter. And back in those days, uh, in the early 90s, there was still a trading floor. Trading floor and it was very easy to get into the industry because that's that was the the easiest way to get into the futures trading industry and the very bottom is becoming a runner you know a runner would be someone that uh, would take an order and run it into the trading pit to the floor broker and that's that's how i got started you know unfortunately these days really to get started in the trading business you have to go to a top university have a degree in you know computer science and applied mathematics and go through a big series of, of tests to get accepted. But, you know, that's why I like doing these presentations because it's sort of a way of giving back, um, you know, some of my knowledge that I've gained over the years for people that aren't able to go that route, you know, that, that aren't uh, computer whizzes or mathematical whizzes and, you know, want to get into trading. So I left the trading floor after being there for about two years to work on the upstairs trading desk at Dean Witter because I realized that trading was going electronic. And we had just started up uh, Globex at the CME. Uh, CBOT had Project A at that time. And NYMEX Colmex had what was called the Access System. And <clears throat> they needed people to trade that stuff. So I, I left the trading floor to go work upstairs and, and do that. I worked in the middle and you know overnight. I'd come in at 10 p.m. and leave at 8.30 in the morning. And, you know, it was a great exposure to not only, um, you know, other markets, but as well as the international markets. You know, I was became um, exposed to the Asian markets, you know, uh, the Nikkei, JGBs, Hang Seng, as well as um, the European markets. You know, the Life, Matif, which was the French markets, um, DTB, which later became Eurex. Now, I, I left Dean Witter and I joined EDF Man. I spent two years there on their global macro trading desk, you know, EDF Man is a big English trading company. It was founded in the late 1700s and is still around. But, um, you know, that gave me a lot of additional exposure to commodity markets. After EDF Man, I joined, joined Commerce Bank in Chicago as their licensed Jurex trader. You know, you have, in those days you had to uh, pass a very difficult trading exam on, you know, everything from futures to options. It's not like the Series 3 or Series 7 here in the U.S. Some universities there in Europe use that uh, Eurex exam as, as a prerequisite to getting accepted into the, their um, master's uh, program. After that, I joined Cargill. Cargill is a big commodity, privately held commodity company in the United States. You know, if it was a publicly listed company, it would probably be like um, the fourth largest in the United States. And they account for about 25 or 30 percent of grain exports and about 20 percent of meat exports from the United States. But they're also involved in all the other commodities um, from oil to palm oil to pretty much anything that's traded that, you know, that can be grown out of the ground or um, dug out of the ground. And then I spent eight years at J.P. Morgan as vice president of futures trading. I sat on the trading desk. I didn't sit in some corner office. That's what I did every morning. I'd come in at five in the morning, uh, not five, but like five thirty in the morning, and I'd stay there till about four thirty in the afternoon. And you know, on the trading, that's trading. That's what I did day in, day out, for eight years. Then I left J.P. Morgan after my daughter was born, because I wanted to spend more time with my family. And in 2015, I started up uh, Orderflows.com, which is a software company. You know, we we put out the Orderflows Trader software, which runs on Ninja Trader. We also have a version for Sierra Charts under Emoji Trading. And basically what I want to do is I want to take my knowledge and apply it to, um, you know, uh, put it in a form that, you know, other users can use my knowledge. And I said, you know, a lot of people aren't going to have this institutional background 
that I have, and it's not something that's readily shared by a lot of people. So you know, that's why I, I like to do these presentations, so I could give people an insight into how the institutional traders uh, operate and how you can see what's happening at the institutional level in the market through order flow. So what I'm presenting here is what I've developed for myself and built my trading career on, and hopefully you can find things that you can use or things you can modify and adapt for your own trading. <clears throat> you know, I'm not saying that you have to follow what I say just because I say it. You have to evaluate everything you come across, whether it's from me or one of the other speakers here today, and decide if it's going to help you. If not, reject it. You know, trading, I always feel that trading is a journey, right? And you have to grow as a trader. You have to learn new things, find what works, what resonates with you, and that you could apply for your trading to become a better trader. You know, it's not a it's not a case of picking up a book on the markets, reading it, and committing it to memory, every sort of chart pattern that's ever been devised, and say, this is it, I'm going to be the master trader. No, you know, the w way to approach it is, you know, learn everything you can, take what makes sense to you that you can um, use in your trading, and apply it to your trading. You know, it's not like... Um, you know, you just attend one year in college and that's it. You got a college degree, you're ready to do um, everything in life. No, you know, you, you take all different courses and you maybe take some things that you learn from one person, one teacher, one professor. You take some other things from another professor and it, it that's how you build your foundation. And let me be clear, right? With trading, you have to make decisions. You know, that's what trading is about. You know, people like to buy indicators and think it's some magic, formula that's going to turn the computer into a cash machine you know an indicator is not a trading system right an indicator is something that solves a particular problem or form of analysis in the market um, under certain conditions you know lots of times people buy indicators thinking that's it you know they bought a trading system when it's really not you know a full-blown trading system's got a lot of a lot more bells and whistles than just a trading indicator but <sighs> The point is, when you know how to read the market, you don't need indicators, you don't need trading systems, you are the trading system. And when you understand order flow, you understand the market, what's happening in the market, and the decisions are going to become crystal clear. You know, what would you, you know, I had this discussion last night with somebody about uh, the self-driving cars. You know, I, I think it's better to drive your own car than having a self-driven car. Um, and you know, the, the point is why is because you know, you're going to be able to react faster than a self-driven car, you know, and you know, honestly, I, I, you know, the, the whole thing of humans versus robots is, is a whole nother discussion. But, you know, when, if I'm going to put my life, you know, on the line, I want to have control over it, you know, not some robot car. So in, in trading, it's the same, you know, once you learn how to trade, you know, because honestly, you know, people have been trading for hundreds of years. People have made big fortunes trading okay and if it was easy to just program it into a computer then you know the markets would never move there'd be no edge anywhere because computers would just be able to to find that that discrepancy price discrepancy and it would just cancel itself out you know it would no longer be there but you know trading is based on human emotions is based on what people think of value now versus what they think of value in the future and <clears throat> When you understand, um, you know how the markets move, why they move, how people think about the markets, and seeing it, seeing it firsthand in the order flow, I think that makes all the difference in the world. So, before I begin, let me just uh, go over a brief disclaimer: this presentation is for educational and informational purposes only, and should not be considered a solicitation to buy or sell a futures contract or make any other type of investment decision. Futures trading contains substantial risk and is not for every investor. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that could be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And again, you know, results vary because no two people are going to approach the markets the same way. Um, you know, maybe, um, you know, maybe you're more risk averse than the person next to you. Or, you know, maybe you don't have time to really apply what you're trying to learn into the markets, or maybe it just doesn't make sense. That's why I say, you know, watch the different presentations and see what, uh, you know, makes sense to you that you could apply to your, to your trading. So <clears throat> let's jump into this. So 
how to get an edge over other traders. You know, everyone always says, you know, to be successful in the markets, you have to have an edge, right? But they don't really talk about the edge. You know, they'll, they'll say, you know, buy low, sell high. That's not an edge. You, you need to see things from a perspective that other traders aren't. And I really believe that order flow is, gives you an edge. It gives you that insight into a market that other people aren't paying attention to. And the information is available to all the traders. It's just whether or not you want to look at it. And, you know, with basic order flow, with, with a footprint chart, you don't need level two, level three data. You just use the same information that's put out by the exchange. And what order flow software will do is it'll put it into an easy to read format. And order flow analysis provides the trader the kind of advanced information that they need to get an edge over other traders, which is basically the competition. It's about taking the money from the person on the other end of the screen and putting it in your pocket. You know, the vast majority of traders out there use a simple candlestick chart like this. <clears throat> okay, now I admit, you know, I, I studied candles back in the in the 90s <clears throat> when they first started becoming popular. And okay, you know, they work sometimes, honestly. You know, there's certain patterns I, I still like to trade around but um you know it's they're they're about as right as often as they're wrong so you know is there an edge and eh, not, not really i for me there hasn't been you know i mean like <clears throat> there's several bars here that are very bullish so are bearish like i'm looking at this candle right here you know this is the uh like a shooting star yeah market sold off in the next two bars and rallied up made new high you know yeah well, well here's a doji and the market sold off well Okay, I mean, honestly, you could just pick a level anywhere and try to break out off of it, whether it's a doji or, or not. But, you know, there, there just really wasn't anything solid to get out of it, you know. And and still people look at candles and, and they try to to look for something that's, that's never been discovered before. Okay, maybe you can, but honestly, you know, I think you're just going down a, a blind alley. Now, um, order flow is going to allow you to see why a bar ended up a certain way instead of just that the bar ended up in a certain way you know with candlesticks you're looking for something like okay like here you have a doji okay well what does that mean why did it end up as a doji why is this bar here as a shooting star and then it failed and you know would have stopped you out why you, know, you want to understand why that's happening rather than just saying oh okay there's a doji and there's a shooting star you know i i think it's better to understand what's happening in the market so the volume footprint chart has been around for at least uh you know at least a decade you know this is 2018 um i think it goes back i think it goes back into the 90s you know um there's been earlier versions and some other software of it but um the volume footprint chart what it does is it takes the data what's traded on the bid what's traded on the offer what i mean is what is the volume and it puts it into an easy to read format that was going to allow you to see support and resistance um, it's going to allow you to tell if buying or selling is weakening. It's going to allow you to see where trap traders are, if there's divergence in the market, where value is, if there's imbalances, and much more. And when I created the order flows trader software, now, you know, I'd been using another company's footprint chart, and yeah, that was fine, but it was just a basic chart, you know. It was just it was just the basic information. And what I wanted to do, why I created the order flows trader software, is because I wanted to take my analysis and have it show up in the chart so I didn't necessarily have to sit here and try and decide if support or resistance was here, you know, if traders were trapped here, if there was divergence, if there was market imbalances appearing. I wanted that information to be shown to me on a chart. You know, I'm a bit visual and I, I could analyze a, you know, the human mind is a fact. Human mind can process an image much faster than it can, um, words or, or numbers, you know, text basically. So if I could take how I analyze the market with order flow and have it appear on the chart, you know, with arrows, with, um, different colors and, and whatnot, then I would rather do that than, you know, just sit here and try and decide on a bar by bar basis what's going on. You know, I want the computer to do the work for me. Now, you know, this is an age old question, right? Why does the market move when people say, well, the market moves because there's more buyers than sellers. I literally read a book this morning, a trading book. You know, I, I love reading old trading books 
and I've got a nice book collection. But um, it even said in that book, it said, you know, buyer, you know, markets move up because there's more buyers than sellers. No, it doesn't. You know, honestly, if <clears throat> there, there, for every buyer, there is a seller. OK, but there's different types of buyers and sellers. Now, again, you know, if for every buyer there was a seller, the market would never move. It would just stay in one spot. Right. But what's happening is what you have is more aggressive buyers than aggressive sellers. And I want to get that in a second is once you understand the different types of buyers and sellers, then you, trading, you know, it, it's like having a translation dictionary because you're going to understand what's happening in the market. You know, it's like going to a foreign country, not understanding the language, but then, you know, you start looking up the words, people are talking to you, then everything starts making sense. And there are four types of market participants. You have aggressive buyers, Aggressive sellers, passive buyers, passive sellers. Now, aggressive buyers are the buyers who buy at the market. They lift the offer. Aggressive sellers are sellers who sell at the market. They hit the bid. Passive buyers are the ones who work a limit on the bid or below the bid. Passive sellers are sellers who work a limit on the offer or above the offer. So basically, an aggressive buyer wants to get into a trade. A passive seller, no, they're not aggressive. They they'll let the market come to them and the best way to think about it is is going to a car dealer right you want to buy a car you've got fifteen thousand dollars cash on you to buy a car but the car you want is twenty thousand well <clears throat> you're going to bid fifteen thousand cars on offer at twenty thousand well how's the trade going to happen is well the dealer's going to decide you know uh, you know i've got I got a truck full of cars coming in next week. I got to move some of these cars. So, okay, I'll sell it to you at your bid price of 15000 Now, the, sell, the, the car dealer is the seller. He's the aggressive seller. He hits your bid. And if you're like, oh, gosh, and the dealer is like, well, you know what? I, I can't move. You know, I'm offered at, at $20,000. Like, well, I only got 15000 And the guy's like, well, come back when you got 20000 you know, no trade's going to happen until you scrounge up that extra 5000 and you become the aggressive buyer and you buy it at 20000 You know, maybe you go home and, you know, call your, your girlfriend or your wife and say, hey, you, know, you got 5000 you can let me so I get this car. And, you know, you're going to be the aggressive one. And then you're going to the one that's the aggressive buyer and you buy the car. So that's the difference between aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers and passive buyers and passive sellers. Now, by understanding the trading occurring in the market between the aggressive traders and the passive traders, you gain an understanding as to what's happening in the market at any point in time. Hang on, let me get something to drink here. Now, remember, going back to that statement, um, you know, how do markets move? Well, it's not because every buyer is a seller. Markets go up because what you have is you have more aggressive buyers than aggressive sellers. And the aggressive buyers are buying all the passive seller's offers. If the market is six bid at seven and there's 50 lots on offer at seven, the aggressive buyers buy all 50. Next thing you know, it's eight offer. Then they start buying the eights. Once they buy all the eights, it's a nine offer. That's how the market goes up is the aggressive buyers buy all the available offers and keep bidding the market up and going higher and higher. That's what makes a market move up. You know, for a market to move down, you have sellers selling all the selling into all the bids that are there. Selling it all till it's gone. Nobody's bidding at that level. Next thing you know, it's one tick lower and so on and so on. It's that's what moves the market is when you have more aggressive buyers um, lifting all the aggress the passive sellers offers. Markets move lower when all the uh, when the aggressive selling overwhelms the passive buying. So in 2015, when I created the order flows um, business, right, the order flows trader 2.0 is, was the cornerstone. And it's the software that basically what I want to do is take all the different forms of order flow analysis that I do, put it into the software so it can show me, um, you know, what's happening in the market. And the way I look at it is, like I said, it's it's not a full it's not a trading system. It's not designed to be a trading system. It's designed to point things out to me in the market on what's happening. Like, hey, idiot, you know, don't miss that. You know, you could have potential trap traders here, or don't miss that you could have um, market imbalances appearing here. That's why I created it. You know, I I'm still the trader, right? Computer is not the trader. I'm the one that's pulling the trigger on the trades. And you know, we also I also created several courses on order flow trading. Basically, the way I like to describe it is basically like hang, having me sitting down on 
on the trading desk next to you, looking over your shoulder, telling you what's happening in the market. Now, there's many different ways to use order flow, right? There's no one way. And there's many people out there that I know that use just one aspect of order flow analysis, and that's how they trade. That's how they make their daily nut. You know, they make their, um, you know, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars, and they call it a day. That's it. You know, they trade for a few hours, just look for specific, um, I hate to say patterns, but setups in the market, and that's it. They take it until they hit that number. And right now, I really feel like order flow is picking the low hanging fruits, um, because. Hedge funds at this point haven't really gotten into using order flow analysis the way you know they have with all other forms of analysis, and but that's changing. That's that's changing. Um, you know, different forms of order flow is, is just basically a data point, and soon you know these hedge funds, the good ones now I know are getting into it and analyzing um, different parts of order flow. So I want to talk about now is the different tools that we have in the order flow trader to allow you to see what other traders can't see. So the first one is market imbalances. And what's a market imbalance is when there are more aggressive buyers and sellers or vice versa. And what I mean is in the two way auction, you have more aggressive sellers and aggressive buyers. And why is that important? Because that's what's going to move the market. And when you have an imbalance, it means you usually have at least four to one ratio, four times as many aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers at a point at a price level or bid offer level in the bar. Selling imbalance is the opposite when there's at least four times as many traders selling the bid than traders buying the offer. Now, why is that important? Is because, well, like I said, you know, a market's gonna move lower when you have more aggressive selling than aggressive buying. And a market's gonna move higher when you have more aggressive buying than aggressive selling. That's what's gonna cause the markets to move. And in the order flows trader, a buying imbalance in the volume footprint chart, a buying imbalance is going to be a blue number. A selling imbalance is going to be a red number. A normal trade on the two-way auction is just going to be a black number. Okay, and then you notice the majority of the numbers are black. That's because no one is necessarily in control. Even though you'll have more volume on one side or the other, it's not an imbalance, right? Um, it, it's just the way you view an imbalance is when a market's, you know, think of a scale, right? You know something is is kind of evenly distributed but you know if you know over time it's it's balanced to one side more so than the other obviously that's an imbalance and it's the same way in a market right as the market's moving down you can see here it's mostly selling imbalances as the market starts moving up you got buying imbalances now <clears throat> you know there's other ways to analyze this which i'll get into in in a bit you know this is just sort of the basic part and you want to understand that you know, you have more aggressive selling in a bar. It's you know that's important information. You know, sometimes people will think that it's it's important, it's easy to tell. But what you want, you know, do you want something that's definite, or do you want something that you're trying to discern that you know, hey, I got aggressive buying. People will say, well, you got red candles, so obviously sellers are in control. Yeah, okay, but then you know, at some point, the market's going to stop and it's going to start going back and forth, back and forth. What you want to know. When a market sort of pauses, you know, on a sharp move down, it's easy, right? You don't need order flow if you just see big red candles on the way down. Yeah, selling sellers are in control, but it's when you hit that low, markets. You got to be asking yourself when you hit a low, you know, is the market going to turn around? You know, you got your first green bar here. You want to know, are we going to pause or are we going to start, you know, go sideways? Are we going to rally back up or are we going just going to sell off some more? And that's where the order flow part comes in. You know, you can see as you come into this low, you've got, um, you know, stacked buying imbalances in two bars right off the low. That's important information. So delta is another part of order flow. And delta is the difference between aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers in a bar. And it's important because you want to know who's dominating that bar. And usually delta, you know, on, on my software, on the order flows trader, it runs along the bottom. Right, some will like to put it above and below the bar. It's just neater to, I think, keep it along the bottom. And you'll see each bar has a delta, right? Either it's going to be positive or negative. It can be zero. Zero, I don't think, means anything. It's just neutral. Ballot buyers and sellers are evenly matched. And, you know, it doesn't, you know, there's not some hidden secret in the delta that ends in zero. It could end in one or two, you know, it, it's not like, oh, it ended in zero. That means I have to, it's like a doji. It's very rare, but it does happen. 
don't get uh, don't get too excited about it. But again, in generally speaking, speaking, when a market's moving down, you're gonna have negative deltas. When a market's moving up, you're gonna have positive deltas. And there's all there's different types of delta. You have a max delta. You have a min delta. Max delta is how strong the delta was in a bar at one point, and min delta is how negative delta was at one point in a bar. And there's ways to analyze that as well. Point of control in a bar is the price level with the most volume, right? There's no mathematical formula to determine it other than simple arithmetic. What you do is you take the price level in the bar, add up both sides, and if that level has the most volume, that's your point of control for the bar. And why is that important? It's because that's going to give you real-time market-generated support and resistance levels on almost a, on a bar-by-bar -bar basis, you know? You know, as a trader, right? You one of the age-old questions is, "Wow, I wish I knew why this price, why this bar that we're in retraces back up to a previous level in the previous bar." Because that's where value was in the previous bar, and as you can see, as the market's moving down, you're going to have lower point of controls because that's your value area in the bar. As the market's moving up, you're starting to see point of controls moving higher, and one of the things that we've done with the uh, order flows trader is there are certain times where point of control is important i call it a prominent point of control and we'll highlight it you know with uh, a blue a blue background point of control in each bar is going to be um, gray but my software will highlight it with uh, blue if it's a support area or red i don't have one on this chart if it's a resistance area and it's important because Again, it's going to give you um, support or resistance at a real-time level, right? It's, it's, you know, people like to think of support and resistance, you know, when a market comes back and tests a level. Well, did this market come back and test this level? No. But when the market sold off, based on the order flow, I know there's support down here. I don't have to wait here to come back to 27, 12 to confirm I've got support here. No, I know in the order flow that there is support there. And the market starts moving back up. You know, so that's why that's important. Again, you know, here's a better example. Here's your prominent point of control, you know, a bearish one. Here's a bullish one. And you can see how oftentimes the markets, especially in markets really driven by supply and demand, um, deep markets in the sense of heavy volume, you know, like bonds, it works great on bonds, it works great on, um, you could find these turning points just like this, right? You got a high up here. And then it sells off to this low and you got a prominent point of control and then it rallies back up here now again you know most people the way they would look at support or resistance they're like okay well we have this level up here we're going to wait for it to come back up here and then if it comes back up here i'm going to get short again well why not trade it now when it happens just as this one here why wait you know you're missing a great trade lower and a great trade back up to that level you know that's the thing which i'll get into later is people like to to wait for confirmation um, you know, when you should be trading the market, right? You got to get up off the bench and start trading rather than sitting around waiting for confirmation of this or confirmation of that. Understand what's happening in the market and say, hey, I, I got a prominent point of control up here. I got a resistance area. I could get short. I, down here, I got a support area. I got a prominent point of control. I could get long. I don't need to wait for this market to rally, you know, from 26.90 to sell off and rally back up to 26.90 for me to get short. I know I can get short up here, 26.88, you know, with the stop just above that high. And what, look at that, you know, 26.88 down to, you know, 26.70 down in here. And then catch the move back up as well. You know, rather than sit here twiddling your thumbs, waiting for the market to come back to give you confirmation, you just got eight points there, eight points back up. All right, that's what traders do. They trade. Now, trap traders is the next one I want to talk about. And trap traders are areas where traders are long and wrong, or they're short in the hole. You know, we've all done it. We've all sold the low, and then we got to capitulate and get out. Or you know, we've all bought a high, and then the market sells off, and you got to get out. Right? That adds to the move away from you know the initial position. Like say you're long and wrong, you bought the high at twenty six ninety. Thinking the market's going higher, then the market starts trading 88, 87, and you're like, shit, I gotta get out, then you sell it. So, you know, when traders are trapped, that causes, you know, that's sort of like adding fuel to the fire, so to speak. It makes the move in the opposite direction 
um, stronger. And with you're looking at a bar chart, can you really determine, you know, if traders are trapped? If you're looking at a, a chart like this, can you say, well, there's trapped traders up here? How can you do that? You can't, right? You're just making a guess to suit your narrative. But if you're looking at order flow, you know, you can determine if there are by looking at what's actually being traded. And again, you know, trap traders is something that I've always liked to look for in, in the markets. And we put it into the software to, to show us where traders are being trapped in the sense that they're long and wrong or short in the hole. And, you know, honestly, trap traders is more of a short term thing. Don't think of it as, you know, the start of some massive trend. I mean, even though, even though in this chart, you know, you could see it up here at this high, then you had big sell off. Really, oftentimes is it's more short term than that, and you can also see trap traders. You know, people in a rising market. You know, in a market that's trending already, because what's happening is you know the market starts moving up, and traders think, ah, you know, we're going to go back test that low, and they start selling it. Then they get stuck. They got to cover, They're getting short, cover it, get short again, cover it, get short again, cover it, get short again, cover it. So you often see it as well in once a trend is underway. Now market sweeps, you know, market sweeps are interesting because it's one of those things that not necessarily everybody thinks happens in the market, but they do, you know, and the reason why a lot of people don't think sweeps happen is because they've never traded on an institutional level. And actually the old NYMEX COMEX access system actually had a function for sweeping the market where you could enter a bid or an offer several levels through the price and it would just buy or sell everything there. And why is it used? Well, it's used by traders that want to um, wipe out all the bids or offers you know to a certain price level because they think the market's going to move and they want to get everything on that they can as quickly as they can and you know some people will say well you know, no one's ever going to buy through the offer no it does happen it happens very often especially in markets like crude oil you know markets where people are doing deals in the physical product and then they're going to do something in the futures either to um because you know, they know the direction of the market that the physical is going in and futures will follow. So they're going to use it to, you know, add, you know, make extra money. So, you know, imagine somebody, you know, you're, you're work for BP or stat oil and you just do a, a big deal in the physical market. And, you know, that's going to have once that news gets out, it's going to affect the, the futures market. You're going to come in and you're going to sweep the market. You know, I would see it a lot in markets like cotton, especially if you watch cotton overnight. You know, if there's news coming out of China. Next thing you know, cotton is is down um, two points. And then somebody sweeps the market to limit up. Like within 15 seconds, they just buy everything that's in there. Then next thing you know, markets limit up, and it's limit up all day into the day session. And it happens more often than people care to admit. And um, you know, it, think about it, institutional trader. Institutional traders, you know, have big ticket sizes. You know, they got to trade 2,000 S&Ps. They're not just going to, um, when, when they get their fill, basically, they're not concerned with, well, I bought 75 at this price, 87 at this price, 250 at this price. They just look at the average price. And if you're buying 2,500 S&Ps, E-minis, the market is, you know, 27, 27 and a quarter at 27, 27 and a half. They see they could buy everything they can basically get filled all the way up to 27, 28, you know, and have an average of around 27, 20, 27, 27, spot 27. They're happy to do that. Okay. Um, because they know that their buying is going to move the market. And so if they could get their average price on their fill below where the market's going to end up, then they're happy to do that. And the order flows trader software, the order flows 2.0 trader is the only Trading software that's going to show sweeping activity, and you can see how it is here. Right? Market selling off, just going sideways, and someone comes in, sweeps the market down. Next thing you know, you got the follow through. The market sells off. And here's another example. You had a sweep here. Okay, market didn't really go anywhere. Then the market starts moving again. You got another sweep happening for right before the market sells off. You know, it's not every time a sweep happens that it's going to be guaranteed that the market's going to move in that direction. You know, sometimes the market's going to, you know, what's going to happen is someone sweeps through the bids or sweeps through the offers. The market's going to pause. People are going to come back in, bid again. 
and then maybe the sweep the second time around like you can see here isn't going to be so obvious because now you got more um more volume in the in the bids and the offers but oftentimes it's it's a nice indicator it's a nice i hate to say leading indicator but you know it's telling me that there's some sweeping activity coming through in the market right before it's going to make a move now hopefully you can understand you know the different aspects of order flow analysis such as point of control delta imbalances and other information is a very useful tool for assessing the market for identifying and evaluating trading opportunities perhaps the most important adding order flow to your trading arsenal will help you find trades that the public misses you know that's the power of order flow you know if you're looking at a normal bar chart you're not going to see where people are sweeping the market you're not going to see where traders are trapped you're not going to see if there's an internal level in a bar acting as support you know, you're just not going to see that information on a normal bar chart so the big advantage of this for order flow trader software users is they don't have to make any of those calculations you know they can just look at the chart and understand oh, okay yeah there's a sweep just happened here and react to it or you know it looks like there's trapped traders here and react to it you know the order flows trader software automatically plots all the traded volume for easy for every market and time frame in a simple and easy to read format so and the next thing I want to talk about are what are hidden price movements and how to see them with order flow. And, you know, traders would rather hide their activities in the market than tell everybody, hey, look, me, I'm buying, you know, this big order. I want to get it done and I'm going to move the market. And it's a bit like zebras. You know, I, I asked my son the other day, you know, why do zebras have stripes? And he says, well, so, you know, he's four years old, granted, he said, you know, hit me with an answer that I wasn't expecting. He said, well, that's so you can tell them apart from horses. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay, I didn't think of that. But you know, the reason zebras have spots, you know, if you've ever been to the safari out there in Africa, it's not a bunch of black and white stripes. You know, it's a lot of grass, it's green color. Um, often, you know, even though you, you turn on the news and you think everywhere in Africa is, is, in, is in a drought and famine, it's actually, you know, lots of places there that have a lot of green and trust me, black and white stripes stick out on green, but zebras, you know, are herd animals. And if you're a lion and you're looking to, and you're hungry, right? And you see a zebra, but then you see another, you know, you see a big pack of zebras. It's like an optical illusion. It looks much bigger than one zebra alone. And it's like that with the markets, you know, you oftentimes see so much volume through and going through that you, you don't want to make any decision. But if you were to throw, you know, white paint on one zebra, it's going to stick out. And there's going to be times in the order flow where trading activity just sticks out. So if you're looking at a bar chart, all right, this, this area down in here where the box is, you know, you see how the market reversed. And if you're looking at a bar chart, you're not going to know that this market reversed or is going to start reversing until it makes the reverse. You know, people will say, well, you can just draw a trend line up here. And if we break that, yeah, you know, we're reversing. Well, wouldn't you rather know down here at the bottom that something's happening that's going to be causing it to reverse and rally back up? And if you understand order flow, you can see that happening. <coughs> you can see imbalances multiple imbalances coming in here that's what this you know, i didn't talk about it just now but um one of the things the order flow trader software does is it will put a box around a bar that has multiple imbalances and what that means is more than one more than three imbalances in a bar you know with imbalances there's what they call a stacked imbalance which is three imbalances just neatly stacked on top of each other like you see here this this green area but you can notice here just right the bar right after the low there's you know this sort of purple box right after it right around it the bar what that is that's a multiple imbalance and it's telling me there's more than three imbalances in there so i know this bar is dominated by market imbalances buying imbalances in this case because see they're blue numbers and that's important because we're coming down into a, a low a swing low here all of a sudden i'm seeing a, a lot of signs of aggressive buying coming in so I can know that you know the aggressive buying's here this is going to give me a great trading opportunity right down in here rather than you know if you draw a trend line going down up here through this swing high this lower high this lower high yeah there's a three line trend line but I can know down here before you even get up 
you know, way up here, that this is a buying opportunity rather than waiting for this breakout. You know, people, like I said before, you know, everyone likes to wait for confirmation. Well, if you understood how to read the order flow, you got your confirmation. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's another bar or another bar chart. And again, you know, similar, all right, you got this swing low and the market starts rallying. And again, you know, people say, well, you can just draw a trend line here and you break out there or, you know, you got this toward candle. Well, if you can read the order flow and what's going on, you have a divergence. So you got positive delta on a new low. You have a bullish ratio. You know, I've done a lot of videos on, on this ratio analysis. That's what these blue numbers are above or below or the black numbers above or below. A blue number is something that's important. And, you know, that that's what I... When I first released the order flow trader software, to me, that was the most important part of it. And it's still important. And there's these ratios and divergence, which is like a bread and butter trade. I've, you go to my YouTube channel. I've got tons of videos on these. And, you know, it's day in, day out. It's a great tool for finding highs or lows. And if you knew down in here, as you're making this new low, right, you always got to be asking, is this low going to hold or are we going to go lower? We come down in here and I see, hey, we got divergence and we've got a, a bullish ratio. To me, that's go time. You know, that's the signal that I need to get long. And you can see how the market rallies up from 2676 all the way up to, you know, 2688. You know, here's another example. Again, you got that swing low, rally up to a, this high up here. But if you look at the order flow, you know, that's actually the low of the day. You've got a prominent point of control. That's this blue bar here, this blue box. You got the bullish ratio, this blue number. You got the divergence. And you also had a setup here also. This is a ratio setup, three in a row. You know, where you would get long is on the pullback to this point of control down here. You know, from 2690 all the way up to this point of control up here at 27, you know, 06 up here, 2708. So and then the market sells off from this bearish point of control, goes down again. But again, you know, anytime you're coming into a low or a high, you know, you want to be asking yourself, you know, is this low going to hold? What's the signs in the order flow that this low is going to hold? And it's there. And you can see how the market rallies up from this low all the way up to this high and sells off from this high. So, you know, and what's interesting is, you know, a lot of these charts, they look alike, you know, when markets make lows or highs, they, they really look alike. And understanding what's happening in the order flow is just going to put you ahead of everybody else, because you're going to understand that, hey, you know, what, this, this can be a low forming, I can see it happening in the order flow. Now, here's a, you know, we, we sell off, rally back up, up in here, then we sell off again. Okay. And if you can read the order flow, you know, it's, again, it's going to put you head and shoulders above the rest of the traders out there. And again, you know, this market is going up, right? You got stacked buying imbalances. You got multiple imbalances here. You even got a multiple imbalance and a, a stacked buying imbalance in the bar. Then what happens? Why isn't this market going higher? That's the question you should be asking yourself when you're sitting here. If you're looking at a normal bar chart. Okay, we're starting rallying up, you know, big green bars. That's bullish, right? You know, a lot of buying going on. Then you got a small red candle here, another small red candle, a doji, a green candle. And then wham, it just gets slammed right here, here, here. You know, what's the clues? Well, if you can understand order flow, you understand that after you make this high, aggressive selling starts coming in in this bar. You can see multiple imbalances. This bar here, multiple imbalances. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven levels in this bar with imbalances. So, you know, maybe this first bar here with the multiple imbalances, you're not convinced yet because honestly, it's kind of early and you just came on the back of a lot of aggressive selling. But when you see this bar here where the bar is you know, it's half selling imbalances, it seems that's your sign to get short, you know, right as it's coming off, you know, makes the sell off from 2733 down to 2722, just like that. You know, I mean, that's the beauty of order flow is it allows you to make those decisions in real time not waiting oh you know wait i gotta wait till we break this line down here or something or you know we gotta come back up to this high test it and then sell off no it's allowing you to make those decisions right now you know it's another example market's going up comes off a little bit goes back up bam makes the big sell off this is crude oil you know sells off from 56.15 all the way down to 55.70 55.65 
and again markets going up you can see trap traders coming in here right you see even buying sweeps coming in here as well so you know there's traders that were trying to sell down here and they're getting stuck and they're covering it then you see people sweeping the market on the way back up you get up here you got a bearish point of control market does sell off a little bit over the next two bars rallies back up makes a new high okay and that's what trading is you, you say okay you take a position okay look i got a bearish point of control i'm gonna get short i get short okay it comes back up here i get stopped out you gotta be astute and take the next trading opportunity that it comes you know don't sit here and think, oh, I just took a trade. I lost. I want to stop trading for a while. No, you got to keep trading. Um, you know, it's, it's, you got to keep focus. You know, when you golf, you hit a bad shot, you shank it off, off the tee. You don't say, ah, oh, I could, I'm not going to golf the rest of the day. No, you keep golfing. You know, a, a pitcher playing baseball gives up a home run. He doesn't say, hey, coach, come in here, take me out. No, he goes back in there. He keeps pitching. And with trading, being successful is, accepting that you threw a bad pitch accepting that you hit a bad tee shot and you keep going because what's going to happen is this is going to happen you come back up you made the new high here bearish point of control or bearish prominent point of control multiple imbalances you got a stacked imbalance okay now this is looking like an even better selling opportunity than it is here so you're willing to take the shot you know where you're going to get stop out you're going to put your stop just above the high of this bar then the market makes that move, right? It's making the move now. You know, it's just unfortunate it didn't happen initially on the first bar. But now you're starting to see all the aggressive selling coming in here, coupled with the resistance up here in the point of control. And then the market sells off. That's the move that you wanted. Unfortunately, it just didn't happen here. But again, you know, not every trade you take is going to be a guaranteed winner. Just as every tee shot you make or every pitch you make is going to be, you know, the perfect pitch or the perfect tee shot. So the last thing I want to cover in depth here is what's known, what no one is going to tell you about becoming a successful trader. And this is just reality, okay? Trading systems and methods are viewed as magical by their users, you know, by people that buy them. They think, this is it. I'm going to find the road to, to riches just now. And honestly, you know, if, if you're thinking, you know, that's what order flow is going to do for me, it can, as long as... You apply yourself as long as you take what you learn and apply it to the markets and again that's why i said earlier you know um you know no two traders are alike you know how you trade versus you know your buddy trades is completely different you know read market wizards there's you know 15 20 people in each book they're all successful they all have different ways to approach the market and they come from different backgrounds they come from um different education systems but what's important is they applied themselves to the market. You know, some people, they, li they like to dilly-dally, you know, not dilly-dally, but they like to try something for a week, doesn't work. You know, it's like sometimes you talk to people, yeah, I've been trading for 10 years, you know, and I've just been breaking even. Is Well, then you sit down, you analyze what they've been trading. Well, six months they've been trading this market. Six months later they're trading something else with a different w form of analysis. They're not consistent. Be consistent. <coughs> and, you know, I've seen it. In my own experience since i've started order flows is you know people that buy the software and failed with it you know after a few weeks or a few days even complaining it didn't produce a signal or you know that isolated a trade no you you have to take the information and, and make a decision you know it's a tool for analyzing the market you know it's like you buy a hammer right a hammer is there to do a certain job right you, you can't saw a piece of wood with a hammer you could use a hammer to bang a nail it doesn't mean a saw is useless you know a saw has got its own it's got its own use and software like order flows trader it's not a system rather what it does is it takes the information available to everyone and allows you to view it better right that's how you're going to get an edge over other people is you take the information that's out there and you analyze it how other people aren't analyzing it that makes sense and being a successful trader takes work on your part you know the people who buy order flow trading software whether it's mine or noft or you know ofa or anything else and fail do so because they think they're buying an easy pie in the sky get rich quick magical formula people that don't fail want to understand what's happening in the market so they can make intelligent trading decisions you know people that you know people often think that 
you know, purchasing an indicator is, is like a magical device that's going to feed them, soothe them, change their diapers even. It's, it's, that's not what it's for. It's to help you make better trading decisions. So, you know, once you understand order flow, really looking at a chart, you could understand what's happening in the market and you can make better decisions. Like I said before, trading is about making decisions and you know, here you can see the market is selling off and what's happening as it's selling off you're seeing stacked imbalances uh, multiple imbalances you're seeing negative deltas appearing then you come into a low and now you're starting to see positive deltas you're starting to see buying imbalances stacked buying imbalances multiple imbalances bullish ratios and you know i even cover you know different forms of analysis of delta that you can see forming down here that's this is also very bullish as the market starts going back up so what you're doing is you're reacting in the, in the way i like to describe it it's like driving a car you know you internalize what's happening in the market just as you internalize the flow of traffic you know when you drive you don't sit here and think you know oh, i gotta pull onto the expressway what am i supposed to do you know what to do you know you you know if there's a truck coming that you better slow down and stuff like that and with order flow you see it see what's happening in the market you know market rallies up to where a bearish prominent point of control market sells off starts rallying back up why is because you got multiple buying imbalances in here you got strong positive delta markets just go sideways and a bearish a bullish prominent point of control here some positive delta the market moves back higher and so on and and that's what order flow allows you to do it allows you to see what's happening in the markets so hopefully by now you can see how important order flow analysis is and you know if you're interested in this you know you're going to love the order flows trader software package that i have for you and what it is it's i call it the order flows trader 2.0 and it runs on ninja trader 8 not ninja trader 7. if you're on ninja trader 7 get on ninja trader 8 now um, it's free to upgrade but um you know if you're on sierra charts go to emoji trading tell them i sent you and talk to lee over there he'll hook you up with the, you know, the bonuses is what you get is the order flows trader software with the volume footprint chart with the seven pre-programmed indicators i talked about today i only th i didn't talk about all of them i talked about i think four of them and basically what it is is like having me sit next to you telling you what's happening in the order flow and also you're going to have um, an invitation to our weekly live group trainings we meet monday nights 7 p.m central time and i talk about order flow you know, I talk about what I've seen in the markets. Maybe sometimes I talk about new developments or new forms of analysis. And it's a great place to learn more about order flow on a recurring basis. You also get my chart template, you know, so your chart can look like my chart, right? That's what you want, right? You want to be able to look at a chart quickly, right? You want to see what's happening in the market rather than spend all your time trying to set up your chart right i mean it's frustrating honestly with new software trying to figure it out so with my template you get up to speed very quick and normally i sell this for 8.99 but you're not going to pay that today now having order flow software is one thing right you have to know how to use it and like i just said you know sometimes we've all bought software in the past and we can't figure out how to use it and the thing with order flow software is it's about how to read what's happening in the market so what I also offer you is I offer you education on understanding order flow and to me that's that's important part of trading right so what you get when you get the software for free normally I sell this for 297 you know people buy it pretty much every day and it's the order flow trading course it's 20 lessons 15 hours of video instruction you can get access to that for free so that you can start to learn more about order flow what everything means and start putting it together now if you're watching this presentation i know that you're really interested in understanding order flow so i'll also give you is access to the order flows inner circle video series which is a series of 56 videos on advanced order flow tricks tips and analysis because really what this is you know the order flows uh trading course is is the basically you know the, the college level first year college level course whereas the inner circle video series is more of you know the the junior or senior year college level course on trading with order flow you know this takes what you learn here in the first course it takes everything to a whole nother level and you start adding this all together 899 for the software 297 for the order flow trading course 497 for the inner circle video series it comes out to almost 1700 dollars you know that's 1693 and as a special a special bonus for 
Those of you that watch this presentation through Investor Inspiration, you can get access to the Trader Kickstart course, which is normally sell for two ninety seven, but you can get it for free today. And what it is, it's it deals with the uh, mindset of trading. You know why traders succeed, why traders fail. Um, you know how to improve yourself as a trader. It deals with the psychological side, so that you can understand yourself and where you are now and where you need to be in the future. So you add all that together, it comes out to just about two thousand dollars. It's nineteen ninety nineteen ninety. It's just ten dollars off two thousand. But you're not going to pay that. You're just going to pay a one-time payment of seven ninety-nine. And you know, there's no monthly payments or other payments in the future. Of course, you'll need to pay your um, data fees or Ninja Trader fees, but there's no other payments after that. So just think of that training, you know, the education that you're getting alone is well worth worth the price of admission. In addition to the software. So what you do is you go to orderflows.com slash off2.html and it'll take you to the page. You know, take you where you can go to join, you know, and, you know, watching my presentation is one thing, you know, but, you know, listen to what other people are saying. You know, this is Sheila writes, your orderflows trader software is remarkably helpful. I can clearly see now what's happening in the market. Like, for example, who's in control of the market on a very specific time and who's getting weaker as well. So what you do is you go to orderflows.com slash off2 takes you to this page. There's a couple of videos. There's a lot of examples on the page. You just scroll down and it takes you to the sign up page. Click here. Buy now. I want this. You know, it's handled. Um, I got a couple of payment processors. One's PayPal. The other is Stripe. You know, they're legitimate um, payment processors. I don't get your credit card. I don't want your credit card information. You know, you could pay by e-check even. But you got to ask yourself, you know, why do you want to join order flows? Is because you see the power of order flow analysis and how it can change your trading. You want to understand what's happening in the markets, you know, and you're excited to find low risk trading opportunities, you know, where you're risking just a few ticks in some cases per trade. But most importantly, you want a life of freedom and fulfillment, you know. That's why I, I think, you know, to me that's the most important part of trading is what comes after after the trading day. You know, you get to sit down with your family. And the beauty is, you know, if you want to do stuff with your family, you don't have to trade that day. You know, the markets are open, you know, every pretty much every business day. So there's plenty of opportunities. Um, you know, when you want to take time off, you can take time off. You're your own boss. It gives you that freedom and fulfillment of, of understanding what's happening in the market. So go to orderflows.com slash off two and it takes you to the page. So just, you know, act now. You got to ask yourself where you are now, where you were six months ago. Are you at the same spot? Where were you a year ago in your trading? Are you still at the same spot? What difference? What's are you going to do to make a difference in your trading? You know, you got to get up off your ass sometimes and take the initiative. You got to start learning how to trade, be successful in life. You know, it's not going to just come and fall in your lap. You got to take steps to become successful, whether it's in trading or any other business that you're going to run. You know, you got to take that first step. So thanks, Joe. I'll throw it back to you. You know, thanks everyone. Go to orderflows.com slash off two. And again, you know, if, if you want to watch more about order flow, go to my YouTube channel. Go search order flows on YouTube and, you know, be sure to subscribe. But again, you know, I put up a lot of videos in the past. I got a couple hundred videos on there, but, you know, on, on many different aspects of order flow. And, and hopefully, you know, you could watch that and some things, you know, you'll pick up something and say, you know what? Now I, I really understand the power of order flow that, you know, I, I should be adding it to my trading. And again, you know, stop flushing your money down the toilet. You know, don't be every other week buying some new fancy trading indicator and then, you know, wasting your money because you can't get it to work properly or, um, you know, you think it's some system that's going to turn you into, you know, some millionaire overnight. No, you know, better off investing that money in yourself, learning how to trade, learning about what's happening in the market so you can make good trading decisions. You know, once you learn something, um, you know, nobody can take that away. You know, it, it's the education, invest in yourself. So again, you know, go to orderflows.com slash off two and it'll take you to the sign up page, you know, join. I think it's well worth it and it's not overly expensive. You can, you know, finance it if you, you, um, you know, have a credit card, but you know, at the end of the day, you have to take that first step. You know, I, I could tell you all the benefits of trading order flow, but until you see it firsthand, that's when you'll understand it. So go to orderflows.com slash off two and you know have a great weekend everyone. And I'll I'll catch you guys on the next presentation. Bye bye.